This is my composting toilet and I would say that composting toilet is one of the best inventions ever made for people who like to live off grid. Uh, what we have here is basically the simplest possible version of composting toilet which I made myself. We have a 45 liter bucket here, we have a plank which is uh, acting as a carrying frame or as a carrying plate for a normal, compo uh, for a normal toilet seat. Uh, I don't use any kind of meshes here to prevent insects from going inside my toilet. Uh, I'm going to talk about this a little bit later. Uh, so, uh, what's the idea behind the toilet that you see here? The idea is that basically the bucket itself is also uh, a weight carrying frame for the toilet and this works great. As my bucket is a little bit transparent, you can actually see layers in my bucket and we are going to discuss them. So, first of all, uh, what we have here, you see this dark layer, this is actually a layer where you have liquid. So, here the filler material is soaked with P, which is decomposing, and then you have basically moist material and then you have fresh layers on top. One of the most important things which you have to remember is that if you don't want your composting toilet to smell, and this is basically what majority of the people is concerned with uh, composting toilet, is that you have to stay away from this moisture level. So basically you have to add enough filler material uh, so that basically you are moving away from this uh, moisture level because the main source of smell in composting toilet is not uh, solid waste, but it is actually a decomposing pee, especially because of course a lot of ammonia is being created here. Um, what to use as filler material? Well, in my case, I use sawdust or this material. This is basically wood chips. It's a material which is used for hamster and rabbit cages. Uh, you can make different manufacturers of this material. Uh, and I use this one when I run out of my sawdust, uh, because basically you can buy this in any store for pets. So even in city, for example, you would be able to have your composting toilet and materials free. And what I also do is I also use pit moss. Uh, pit moss again, you can buy it in any store uh, for flowers and so on. So this is basically pit moss, I guess most of you know how pit moss looks like. Uh, and I know people normally say to either use sawdust or to either use uh, pit moss, but I prefer to use both and I'm going to show you how uh, right now. Okay, so how do you prepare your composting toilet for operation and how do you work with it and so on. So, uh, first of all, and uh, what you do is you have to put a layer of sawdust or for example this material which I'm using now, which are wood shavings on the bottom of your composting toilet. Uh, so, I have to break those shavings up. If you have sawdust, you don't have this problem. Uh, so, I will not add too much material just for demonstration purposes. So, this is the first layer. Okay, it should be enough for demonstration, otherwise you would make this layer a little bit thicker. And then, now, as I said in previous video, sometimes I cover this layer with uh, pit moss, sometimes I don't the first layer, uh, I don't cover it. Uh, so let's say how things would look like. So, this and there on leaf here, for example, is uh, your waste, which was left after one going. So, what I do first is I cover this with a layer of sawdust or these wood shavings. We should not go, uh, we should not use too much material because it's just for demonstration. And then you cover this with pit moss, okay? Now let's say you do it again. You have another uh, solid waste here. So you have to cover this again. I'm doing it very fast and <laughs> not very uh, carefully. So another sprinkle of sawdust. And basically what you see here is you have this pile. So as I said, what you do, I don't know if you can see it, it's quite, it's a pile. So what to do, you grab it, you shake it like this, everything levels out. And as I said, of course you see that the layers below were exposed and now you could get smell from down there. So what to do now is, and I'm going to use minimal amount of this because of course uh, this is not an operation, so it would just waste the material. So now you would let a generous layer, not as thin as me, of uh, sawdust. So. You basically cover everything with sawdust in much thicker layer than this. This is just basically coloring it. And you would sprinkle everything or put a nice layer of pit moss over everything, which I'm also not going to do now because there is nothing to hide here. So uh, this is just a demonstration. So that's all about the operation of composting toilet. First layer of sawdust, which you can either cover like this with pit moss or not. Then you start uh, covering the individual excrements or solid wastes. When the pile is too big, you level everything up, you add another layer of sawdust, another layer of pit moss, and so on. 
as I said in previous videos, what you what you have to watch out for is that basically the moisture level doesn't get too close to the surface because then you're going to get smell. Okay, so now that you have seen how I'm using my composting toilet and uh, how I'm adding those layers and how I'm using sawdust and pit moss, uh, let's talk about a few issues uh, which are connected with composting toilet and people are normally worried about. And the first issue without a doubt would be the smell. Uh, what I have to say about this is that if you use enough filler material and correct filler material at the correct time, you should have no problems with smell. I must say that I don't have any kind of problems with smell. And even if you're going to be late with adding additional layer of filler material, don't worry. I mean, the smell is not going to be anything horrible. Basically, when you're going to open your lid, you're going to notice a faint smell. And basically, this is just a signal for you that you have to add another layer of filler material and smell should be eliminated right away. Uh, the next question would be bugs. Uh, now, by my experience, uh, I must say that I don't have any serious problems with bugs. So this is basically a non-existent problem for me. Uh, I know some people said that they had a problem with this. Uh, at the moment, I'm just able to control this or basically eliminate bugs just by, again, adding a filling material and also adding pit moss, which creates, creates basically uh, a barrier through which they cannot go into the sawdust. So uh, at the moment I don't have any kind of those problems. If you would have problems with bugs, it would be very easily solved with just adding another string here, which would prevent bugs from getting to the toilet. Uh, the next issue is toilet paper. And with composting toilet, you can basically use any kind of toilet paper which you would like. Uh, you can also use uh, wet toilet paper or you can use a normal toilet paper. Uh, the only question which you have to answer for yourself is, <clears throat> Are you going to throw toilet paper into your bucket, which some people recommend, saying that, is, uh, that it is a nice moisture absorbing material, or you're going to do something else with it? I started with throwing my toilet paper into the bucket, uh, but I was not happy with this because uh, toilet paper gets quite bulky. And if you want to compress this down to basically uh, close all openings through which the smell could get out and basically to prevent bugs from getting in, you have to use a lot of filler material. And, uh, and I didn't like this. So what I do now is I just take uh, a few pieces of paper towel like this, uh, put it down, I put my used toilet paper on it. When I'm done, I close it and I throw it into my stove. If the stove is operating, of course, that thing burns up right away. Uh, otherwise, for example, now during the summer, I do this for a couple of times and then I just set fire to it and again, everything burns down. So uh, then the next issue about hygiene. As you can see, I'm touching my toilet and there is nothing dangerous about it. It's very easy to maintain. Uh, what you do with uh, the insides of the composting toilet is some people use it for human ur. I don't use it at the moment. Basically, I uh, destroy this. Uh, but otherwise, all you have to do is basically you take this out to your composting pile or whatever you're going to do with it. Uh, you wash the insides and um, I also wash the outside and I disinfect the outside because this bucket is basically uh, staying two and a half meters away from my bed because I'm living in this cottage here, which has 22 square meters, so uh, everything is in one room. Uh, one other advice which I would have is that uh, when you have, have uh, emptied the composting toilet, and this is the only part when you are going to encounter a small, strong smell, because when you are going to uh, throw out the content of this bucket, uh, of course you're going to expose the lower layer which, uh, where the pee is decomposing and then you're going to notice smell. So you wash away this and if there is still some smell present, don't worry, just use this stuff. Uh, basically, I think in America they call it white vinegar, here in Europe, or at least where I am, I am, we call it alcoholic vinegar. You just rinse the inside with this and smell is eliminated right away. Uh, so the last thing which we need to talk about is the size of the bucket. And about this, I have a nice video. Uh, before I started using this toilet, basically this bucket, because the upper part is the same, I used a bigger bucket, but there was a problem with it uh, because it was too high. And you can see uh, a video about this right now. Uh, and I will show you why this one, for example, is a little bit of a problem compared to this one. And the reason is very simple, that is the position in which you sit. And as you can see, this toilet is actually a little bit too high. As you can see, this is a much better, much more comfortable position. So this is my review of my composting toilet based on my experience. I have been using it for the last eight or nine months and living together with it in one room on 22 square meters. I guess there is nothing more to say, so see you next time.